Siege Shockwave. Not only will he look after your home for a few days, he'll look after it for a few million years. And today, as a thank you, we are going to give him the full repaint and customization that he deserves. Now that's an intro. Welcome back to the channel, everybody. So good to have you back. Today we are finally going to do our full repaint of Seed Shockwave. And as with many of our projects, it's going to be a bit more than just a repaint. As I mentioned in my review, which hopefully you got a chance to check out, the hollow sections on the lower legs and knees do kind of bother me. I do wish I had found some online kits to take care of the hollow sections, but they don't really seem to be available anymore. So I think I'm going to have to revert back to my old method of filling them in with putty and sanding them down. Hopefully we'll be able to achieve a nice smooth surface. And speaking of Tamiya Putty, there's a lot of peg holes around the body that I do intend to fill in and just help to give us a more whole look for bot mode. Also the back of the hand and the ray gun are hollow as well, but I do have something special planned for them, so I'll talk more about them later. This permanent backpack has been a bit of a bother for me as well, especially since it impedes the movement of the head, so I will be removing it from this back hinge just behind the head. Now even though I don't intend to keep the battleship transformation, I do have the extra pieces that I purchased for a more authentic gun mode, so I definitely plan to utilize those. But lastly, let's talk about the head. Even though Shockwave has an excellent light piping mechanic, I want to maximize that with an LED. A couple of things make me think that's possible. Number one, he's got a tiny screw on the back of the head, giving us the ability to split the head apart. That will give us access to remove the yellow clear piece inside and make room for an LED right behind it. Also, inside the chest, there seems to be ample space for a battery compartment and a switch, even with the head folded in. But we certainly have our work cut out for us, so let's get started. Okay, so just a couple of things to go over here. This disassembly has been a little bit rough. I don't know if it's just been the quality of the plastic or if I've just gotten rusty, but we've gotten some cracking. We'll start with the not so bad piece first and the head did come apart pretty smoothly. I still do think there's ample room inside to fit that LED, but there is a bit of a hiccup with the design. What I had initially planned to do was to drill a small hole through the ball joint right into the cranium, but there is the small screw that holds both pieces together firmly in the way. I think my solution for that instead of drilling all the way through is to come up at an angle from the top and hopefully meeting somewhere in the middle. So that should be fun. Now what I thought was going to be a big challenge was to remove the clear piece from the chest. Thankfully though that wasn't the case as I was able to remove the plastic section behind and the clear piece was not glued to it at all, giving me ample access to repaint this interior. I do like how it has a circular sections picked out in gunmetal, although it's a little bit sloppy. I think I'm gonna go for a more simplified look of just keeping the whole thing the light purple. There's already plenty of detailing without overcomplicating things with extra paint. And as for removing the soft hose section meant I had to disassemble the piece where it connects to the arm. Even though it has a bit of a wide pin, I was still able to hammer just far enough to be able to disassemble the piece. Unfortunately, that did cause a bit of cracking on one section, but we'll be able to just glue that back into place. That sadly wasn't the end of it though. Trying to completely remove this pin from the lower leg section proved to be pretty much impossible. 
Unless I want it to completely break this piece, there's already a major fracture here. So I will have to glue it to reinforce it and be extra careful in the reassembly. And lastly, I wasn't able to completely remove the feet. As we can see where the regular pin got inserted in the back, but there's no exit in the front. Now I had that same issue when disassembling Studio Series 86 Grimlock. With him, I was able to drill a small hole in the front to remove the pin. And then I just puttied the hole and sanded it smooth. With Shockwave, however, there's so much detailing in place that I don't want to risk ruining the look. So I'm just forced to work around it and mask the feet when painting the legs. Shouldn't really be too much of an issue. But we still have a lot to do, so let's get to stripping that paint.
So earlier I had talked about having some special plans for Shockwave's fists. I really wanted to have some different options like him saluting or pointing, just to have some nicer poses available. And thankfully I was able to commission the great 3D modeler Trigger from the Colts 3D website. He was able to come up with some great looking hands that I think are going to be a great addition to this build. So if anybody else is interested in his work, link is down below. But now, let's get to printing.
So this guy has just been a blast to put together. Yes, after the initial rocky disassembly, the customization and repaint process went pretty smooth. And that's a little bit surprising considering this is the first time we're integrating some 3D printed parts and an LED into the figure, which hopefully won't be the last time. Nothing overly complicated with the LED setup, but I did unfortunately ruin a couple of LEDs only because the cables are so tiny and fragile. It is very much a fantastic look though and I'm glad I went through the trouble of doing that. Now I did actually think that this build was going to take me just a little bit longer, but one thing that helped is just the overall simplistic nature of the color scheme. It's just really a bunch of purple and silver for the whole body, with a little bit of lighter purple and metallic grays mixed in. And I'll say this again, panel lining, dry brushing, weathering are doing wonders for the intricate detailing of the design of the figure. Especially when you compare him side by side with Masterpiece, Takara Tommy has definitely shifted that line into a more accurate look and there's a definite audience for that but I just absolutely prefer the overall detailing of the main line. If I was to repaint this masterpiece figure yeah it would look a little bit better but the detailing still wouldn't come close to this. Now one thing I didn't show in the build is that I did have to go over the LED light with some clear yellow paint to give it that yellow hue. Even though the clear plastic eyepiece is yellow the white LED light was overpowering that. Now I don't know how long that solution will last me. There's a good chance that that paint isn't gonna survive. But if you noticed, I didn't glue the LED to the figure, so it can very much be undone and replaced. Still though, the proper look was achieved. Now one of the more accidental improvements that we have are with the Decepticon emblems. I'm starting to use these dry transfer emblems, which I think look a little better than stickers, but it also doesn't fall into the crevices of that panel lining, keeping the overall logo intact. That's something Hasbro couldn't have achieved with the original figure. And speaking of the original figure, it is still a great figure on its own, but having used that darker shade of purple does diminish the detailing a bit. And also considering the Masterpiece Shockwave went a little bit light with the purple, I think the shade that I went with was a good mix of the two, which is kind of surprising that I was scouring the internet for the exact shade of purple that I wanted. And I ended up going with just regular old to me a purple that I've owned for years but it was worth the trouble and at the end of the day we have one more great figure for the display case. Now I do want to give a big shout out to Trigger from Colts3D.com who did a fantastic job in designing those extra hands and helping me to bring this custom to the next level. And you should check out his page as well. I've got a link down below to his page and to his socials as well. And also a big shout out to 87 Render who helped me with that fantastic new intro and helping me to really level up this channel. Link to his YouTube channels down below where he just released a fantastic new film, RC Dreams of Daikon. Admit it, you probably already saw it 20 times, right? I know I did. But also a special shout out to Lizardsaur in the Discord, who not only referred me to 87 Render, but he helped contribute to those awesome short films too. Link down below to his YouTube channel where he has a great video of him modeling the Hot Ride car. Fantastic stuff. Go check it out. You can also catch me on all the social medias. Which social medias? All the social medias. Yeah, I know, it's out of control. And also on Twitch. Right now we're still playing through Miles Morales, hoping to beat that story soon, and working towards a platinum trophy too. If you can't catch me live, they're uploaded to my second YouTube channel, Hobbies with Jose Gaming. And you can support the channel by visiting the merch store too. But as always, remember, if you like what you saw, you know what to do, right? I will see you all real soon. Wait a minute. But what's next? Hmm.